Hey guys, Chris from Adaptation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question four from the Jan 2019 POA paper two. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. Okay, so let's get to the question. So it does say question four on the top left there, but let's scroll across a little bit so we can see the entirety of the information. All right, so initially um, they want us to state two types of errors which will not be disclosed by the trial balance. And that's just two marks. So if you come across on this side, um, so we know those errors, right? So those are errors of omission, commission, principal, uh, original entry, right? Transposition, uh, compensating errors, and uh, complete review result. Ah, okay, good, right. Now, if you guys need to refresh yourself on errors, I have a playlist on that, and I'm gonna put a card up there and the link in the description, okay? So let's, let's um, check out the next part of the question. It says ABC Company, right, provides the following data at December 31st, 2018. So it says that a, there was a bank balance as per bank statement of 7,350 at 31st December. Then we have two deposits which were paid into the bank on 29th December were not appearing on the month end bank statement. These were as follows C Morris. 1500 B Henry 750. So this sounds like bank lodgements because they were paid into the bank but they didn't appear. So what happens is that they didn't clear. Um, as in the bank has a process where they, they process the checks and get the money from one account to the next. So that takes some time. So clearly that didn't happen yet. And we have this last one. What was it? All right. So two creditors, R. Jones and T. Miles, were paid by check during the month of December. However, these checks for the amounts of 550 and 963 respectively were not shown on the December 31st bank statement. So if you pay somebody checks, same thing applies. It takes time for the, the person to carry the check to their bank and deposit it. And then it takes more time for that process where the money moves from your account to their account. So that's, that's probably unpresented checks because if they carried it, then it might have hit the account already. Right, so this is clearly, um, well, what I want us to do here is prepare the bank reconciliation statement at 31st December 2018 for ABC Company Limited. Show clearly the cash book balance as at December 31st, 2018. So it's, it's six marks. So you want to spend about nine minutes on this question, but I don't think you need that much. All right. So you're going to head up, right? As you can see, ABC Company Limited, I suppose, would, would have been a better thing to put here. All right. So um, Limited. Right, bank reconciliation statement at December 31st, 2018. Now, this is kind of how I prefer to do my bank recs, starting with the bank statement balance. All right, so we start with the bank statement balance, we have 7350. Now, the two deposits which were paid into the bank are not appearing, those are bank lodgements. So you have to ask yourself, what happens to my bank balance, my bank statement balance, when those amounts finally show up? Does it, do, do those amounts increase or decrease my bank statement balance? Well, if they were paid into the bank, they're going to increase your bank statement balance. So you're going to add those bank lodgements. Similarly, these two checks down here, they were payments that, that have not yet been, well, fulfilled. So when they're ultimately fulfilled, money is going to come out of your account, right? So those are unpresented checks. So you're going to have to deduct those things. And when you run your arithmetic, you're going to get a cash balance as per cash book, right? So balance as per cash book. All right, cool. $8,087. All right. Now, again, if, you, if, um, if I didn't put the card yet, I'm going to put a card for my Bank Rex playlist and a link in the description below. Yeah, so they're trying to hit multiple topics in the same question, boy. Okay, so this one says, using data extracted from the books of ABC Company Limited at 31st December 2018, the accountant calculated the following ratios. So he calculated the return on capital employed 43% and the acid test ratio. So explain to management what each calculation means. So you have a little space for your return on capital employed there, and you have some space for your acid test ratio, and it's four marks. So it's about two marks each, okay? So let's, let's scroll up here, and we're gonna see, I'm gonna, let, let, let's show this answer here. So the return on capital employed is the rate of return on the owner's investment, right? And you put your formula, so you put a definition of the ratio and you put the formula, net income over capital employed by 100. There, there are some variations on that ratio and you, whatever formula you learned is probably correct as well. <coughs> Sorry. So, and then you give an explanation about what 
this ratio means. So it measures the amount of profit accruing to the owner or owners as a percentage of the capital that they invested in the business. So remember, the point of starting a business is to make a profit. And when you put money into something, you invest your money, you expect to get some sort of return or reward. You expect to get something back. That's why they call it a return on your investment. It's what you get back from investing, the extra. Because you invest your principal amount, you expect that you can get that back at any point in time. That might or might not happen very easily or very, with great difficulty, but that's a discussion for another time. So the extra you get back, the interest, I guess you could say, is your reward or your return on your investment. And that's another, that's another way, another name for return on capital employed, a return on capital invested. And again, what you get back is your net, the net income, the profit after all expenses and taxes and other charges have been paid, and that is left for you, the owner. Right? And you express it as a percentage of your investment. And what it's telling us, so a 43% return on capital employed means that the owner or owners got back 43 cents on every dollar invested. So it's not that they only got back 43 cents from their investment. Like they, you, like let's say you invested a dollar and you went to get it back and you only got 43 cents and not your dollar. That's not it. You got back your dollar plus 43 cents. Right? So that's what that means. The return on your capital employed. Right? Now your asset test ratio. Let me scroll up here so we can see that particular solution, that answer. Right? So the asset test ratio is a measure of liquidity which shows how able the entity is to repay, the entity being the business, right, to repay its current liabilities with its current assets, excluding inventory, right? So asset test ratio, so it's current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. Now, there are variations in this formula. As a matter of fact, this morning, today was March the 5th. Um, you, you guys are probably going to see this video after that date. And one of my form, well, my current form six is called, and he's like, well, sir, um, my teacher in school gave me a different form as cash, plus marketable securities, plus um, receivables um, divided by current liabilities. Is that right? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, there are different variations. And as you go higher up, you learn slightly more technical definitions and formulas. So again, this one is the one that is usually accepted at the Form 5, the CSEC level. If you are, if you are a CAPE student and watching this, you may, you may have a different formula. All right. Now, what this tells us, this is a more stringent test of liquidity. It tests the, the ability of the company to pay back its current liabilities with its current assets, but you're leaving out stock. You leave out stock because stock is the least liquid current asset. You're never bound to sell stock. So you may not be able to count that as part of your resources, the available resources to repay your liabilities. All right? And an asset test ratio of 1.15 to 1 means that a dollar and 15 cents of current assets, excluding stock, exists to repay each one dollar of current liability. So any grammar Nazis could tell me if exists or exists was the correct one to use. So yeah, so 1.15 to 1 means you have a dollar and 15 cents available to pay off every dollar of current liabilities you owe. So that's, that's a relatively good position to be in. You have excess liquidity. All right, the next piece says T Green is a new employee who started working at the beginning of the month. She complained to management that her contract stated her gross pay would be $2,500 per month. However, she received $2,200 in her bank account. State one reason why T. Green's take-home pay could be less than the gross pay stated in her contract. Taxes. All right, let's scroll up here and see what I, what I put. All right, so T. Green's take-home pay is less than her gross pay because of deductions, either statutory, government required, or voluntary. For example, in the case of the former, which is statutory, you have PAYE, pay as you earn, income tax, NIS contributions, social security contributions, health surcharge, right, look social security there. And in the case of the latter, the voluntary, you can have pension plans, health plans, and personal insurance. All right, now it's two marks, so you don't have to state everything there. You can simply say because of deductions, statutory and voluntary, and give one example of each. I like to kind of go a bit overboard. Okay, next part. Um, so ABC Company Limited would like to raise additional capi oops, capital. The company needs to decide whether to issue shares or debentures. Okay. Explain one right or privilege invest of investors which, ri which, rises, which arise, ri arises from the issue of either shares or debentures as a form of capital. So they want to know what is a right or privilege. Okay. So shares is equity capital. And shareholders, ordinary shareholders have the right to vote at meetings, annual and extraordinary general meetings. I can also receive dividends if the board of directors declares any. So I gave two rights. <laughs> and debenture holders, now that's, that's debt capital, that's a liability. 
they are entitled to interest and to be repaid their principal amount as per the debenture contract. If the entity defaults on the payments, what that means is that if the company who borrowed the money doesn't repay as per the agreement on the contract, the de and, and if the debenture is secured, as in if there's collateral pledged for the debenture, the debenture holder may take possession of the asset pledged as collateral. So if you, you, have a, you issue a debenture and you pledge this asset as security, as collateral, and you don't keep up your end of the bargain, guess what? The debenture holder can come and seize your asset and say, hey, that's mine now. <laughs> you didn't behave yourself, I'm taking what I'm allowed to take, as per the contract. All right, and finally, oh, sorry, I should have scrolled down here first. All right, so uh, ABC Company Limited issued $25,001 ordinary shares, which were fully subscribed. It means everybody, all the shares were, were called for, they were bought and paid for. Prepare the journal entry for the issue of these shares at 31st December 2018, include a suitable narration. All right, if you are issuing um, shares, now, by the way, I'm, once I remember, I'm gonna put a card up there to my LLC's playlist and a link in the description below. All right, so ABC Limited, General Journal, blah, blah, blah. Right, so you're gonna debit bank or cash because if you issue shares, you are raising capital. And if people buy them, money is coming in, which means your bank or cash is gonna go up. Bank and cash are both assets and to record increases in assets, you have to debit. And you're gonna credit the ordinary shares. All right, now, um, this should really have been indented. So let's, let's just indent that a little bit. All right. Um, right. And yeah, so in this particular question, they didn't say anything about no narrations. Eh? In some previous videos, the question, I think it was Jan 2021, they said no narration to require it. But this one, so if they don't see that you can leave out the narrations, put them in. Otherwise, you might not get your marks. All right, and we credit, yeah, we credit capital because we credit capital when it increases. All right, um, okay, so ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Again, don't forget to check the description for the links. I'm also gonna put some, some cards up here to some playlists. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my website for free POA handouts. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching. Leave any questions or comments in the, uh, in the questions, comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.